What's going on guys? Thank you for the people who have bought training and thank you for the people who are about to buy training. And once again, shout out to the Nerd Tribe. Let's get into this. Some of you on my religious video were speaking as the Bible is a historic textbook. It's not. The Bible is full of parables, half truths, half stories, and legendary content. Case in point, in the 40s, there were some Dead Sea Scrolls found in the cave. And one of the things that happened with these Dead Scrolls, because these Dead Sea Scrolls, the manuscripts, were written at the same time the Bible was written. And it is often thought of if some of the stories in the Dead Sea Scrolls had made it into the Bible, history would have been totally different. Like Lilith. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, Lilith was the first wife of Adam. And Eve was the second wife of Adam. And Lilith was a person unto herself. She wasn't made from Adam's rib. She was made from the earth in the same fashion that Adam was. Now, I want you to think, if that one little hiccup had made it into the Bible, the way that we have would have seen women and treated women for the span of historical mankind would have been completely different. Completely different. And also, the Dead Sea Scrolls have a heavy Jewish context. Because, you know, I was looking at the 12 tribes of Israel and Judah, which is assumed to be the black one, the father of the black family. And I, I'm just sitting there because once again, as a kid, I looked at all history. I did not, and, you know, for some reason, even as a kid, I had a very high level of self-esteem. It, it did not make me feel inferior to not see myself. Well, actually, let me go ahead and bring this up. When I was growing up in Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, I remember going to a black barber shop and I remember on this black barber shop walls for pictures of black folks. And I remember there was this billboard um, on the way to the barber shop that had black folks on the billboard. So I grew up, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, one of argumentally the racist cities in the United States of America at the time. Because I was born in 1966 when a lot of things were going on. And I grew up reading Ebony, Jet. So I had a healthy diet of seeing black folks doing well. So I never had this, you know, once again, I didn't experience, I don't know what it's like to have low self-esteem. I don't know what it's like to see something like I just never and once again this is interesting as a child I saw a lot of movies with black folks from the 40s the 50s the 60s the 70s so for me I saw representation for me but once again everyone's level of exposure is different but once again, let's get into the meat of the matter. Uh, the Bible is not a historical textbook. And the way y'all were talking to me, and once again, thanks for your comments. Whether we agree or disagree, this is a good conversation to have. Um, I want you to do some research on the Dead Sea Scrolls. I want you to do some research on the information that was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Because, like I said, Lilith who went on and was thought to be a she-demon, it was really, really interesting because one of the things that I find to be a limiting aspect of black people is the search for 
representation and connection. Because today I was watching YouTube and I realized something that YouTube is somewhat racist. Um, I watch a lot of content creators. And once again, the Graham Stephan thing, I can hit the little dots and they keep recommending his content to me. But for some reason, my YouTube recommendations have dynamically changed to be pushing a lot of black content. I am seeing content from like, there are white content creators that I routinely watch and their information doesn't get pushed to me. But some black creator that I've never seen, especially in the Turo space, there, there's a ton of uh, black creators in the Turo space. That content gets pushed to me and I'm not looking for it. So what I feel is YouTube is starting, they've reprogrammed the algorithm to recommend black created content to black people, which I feel is an era. Let me explain. I grew up with a voracious appetite for knowledge. I read books about the Greeks, the Romans, the Jews, the Africans, Chinese, the Ming Dynasty. I read all that stuff. I consumed all of that. I didn't just consume black history. I consumed history. And what I'm seeing is the polarization of content because you know, if you are a black content creator and you have a show and you can invite whoever you want to, that's your prerogative. But what I'm seeing is, especially in the business space, and I'm gonna explain what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of black content creators lighting it up. And I mean that in the aspect of it being lit. Um, if you will look at my YouTube channel, The Corporate Game, if you look at my YouTube channel, B School for Hustlers, the content is straightforward and focused on business. There is no hype, there is no lit, there is no fancy intro, there is no me in front of a vault. It's just, hey, this is what you need to do to be a corporate citizen. This is what you need to do to be a business owner. And I don't have, I'm gonna say it, I don't have a black edge to my content. My content is for anyone, black, white, red, purple, Chinese, Jewish, whatever. And this is one of the reasons that I feel that my B School for Hustlers and the corporate game don't get the views that this channel gets because of the YouTube algorithm cannot find a black audience that appreciates that content in mass. There are black people who watch the content. There are people who enjoy the content. There are people who are glad that I'm making those videos. But the predominant black society, which is on the hip hop ghetto uh, hood tip, that's where the bulk of the content is created. That's where the bulk of the content is consumed. And those of us who are in the black progressive sector, um, we're kind of left out because, and you know, I, I'm just looking at this because I was just sitting there like, I'm not looking for all this content, but it's being pushed to me simply because I am black. And there's the assumption that I would in would like this content literally i am literally hitting those three little dots saying not interested don't recommend this content to me all day long because here's the thing success doesn't have a color success doesn't care if you're black success doesn't care if you're white success doesn't care if you're jewish success doesn't care if you're asian and this big focus on Keeping it black, keeping it ghetto, keeping it hood. Uh, there's a YouTube content creator who has a show. He has a neck tattoo, it's a hand tattoo. Um, channel's blowing up. 
it's blowing up and you know the thing is we talk about business and money they really they they really the majority of the content is lifestyle black rich lifestyle um once again i am teaching you basic financial principles and i will go ahead and say you don't have to be a millionaire to have an extraordinary life but in the bat black sector in the hood rich sector the indication that if you're not making a million a month flying around on the private jet and let me speak about that private jets for the average person and i'm going to define average person a person who doesn't need a business need if you have a business that requires you to be in two and three cities all uh, three to four times a week that makes sense for you to fly private but for you to fly from Atlanta to go to Miami to turn it up to pop bottles with your friends you spent twenty to thirty thousand dollars one way one way to fly private so you spent sixty forty to sixty thousand dollars to fly from Atlanta to Miami to fly private from a dollar cost allocation that makes no sense when you can your first class tickets gonna cost you fifteen hundred fifteen hundred and you know for me you will never see me posted up in front of a private jet because I don't fly private it makes no sense for me could I yeah but my mind just loses this like I'm gonna spend thirty thousand dollars well the fifteen hundred is both ways I'm gonna spend forty to thirty forty to sixty thousand dollars to fly somewhere that so I could post some pictures on the Instagram that because here's the thing when you spend money like that without proper allocation there's a good chance in the future that you will not have money because you're blowing your money on frivolous things. And this is something that's pushed in the black sector. Literally, I saw guys, I don't know how much money they make, I have no clue, but this notion that you must fly private, you must drive your Rolls Royce up to your private jet or your Lambo, I've literally seen private jet with a Rolls Royce lim and I'm just sitting there like are these guys truly wealthy because here's the thing with if you understand social media as I broke out in the video you can get extremely rich from so social media so what I assume because once again Google zip code 30327 wealthiest zip code in the southeast outside of a few zip codes in florida i lived amongst real wealth and real wealth wasn't doing that it just wasn't doing that so <clears throat> when i talk about blackness um for me the black people that i worship are the black people of the 30s 40s 50s 60s and 70s uh, these black people had class they had prerogatives they knew how to act <clears throat> drug use wasn't prevalent um being a single mom that was like a scarlet letter so those are the black folks that i respect worship adore and study i am not so much a fan of the uh, new black folk which is you know I, i'm just seeing it like you know i'm in the high rise and i am consistently seeing money does not equate to class money does not equate to class i'm in this place with a lot of black folks who have money they legitimately have money but they don't have class and what i'm seeing is this descent into the hood narrative even though they have money give you a case in point like i almost posted a picture of this but this is youtube and folks you know whenever i talk about someone i don't care how big or small the creator is it gets back to them because of the youtube network and one day 
there was some guys in front of the building in two McLarens and a Lambo. Then the guy in the Lambo gets out and he's carrying an assault rifle. And I'm just sitting there like they're posted up in front of the building. Um, and they're just walking around. And at one point, someone drives up in a Corvette and he's counting money. And I'm just like, why are they behaving like that? And my girlfriend was like, they're more likely drug dealers because I never even thought like that because I'm not part of that. But the more I thought about it, yeah, that makes sense. They're drug dealers because productive um, business people do not hang out in front of an apartment building and have assault rifles in their cars. They just don't. They got too much to lose. They, they don't. They don't act like that. And this. This is what I'm seeing. Like. They had the cars, they were living in the neighborhood, but what I see consistently on the black business side is other foolishness. And that was a bunch of foolishness because I've never had the urge to hang out in front of this apartment building. I've never had the urge to just post up and just have conversations out there. I live here. I have an apartment. If someone comes to see me, they can come into the apartment. I, or we have a, a, a meeting room. We have we have several places other than the apartment where people can meet. So, you know, what I'm saying here, because what I'm going with this is this whole black narrative. And this is one of the reasons that I frequently wear a shirt and tie or a collared shirt on the corporate game because I want to display that black folks can conduct business on a proper level wearing the proper attire. And this is this this is one of the things that cries me up because I have you I have so many on this channel who are like, all it is is doom and gloom, but I have B school for hustlers. And I have the corporate game and literally, you know, maybe it's my fault because I'm going to start running commercials on this channel to get people over there who want true business advice. And I'm getting ready to do a lot of stuff because, like I said, you know, I took my little break and I, I had time to think about some things. And this is why every video, I thank everyone who has bought content. I thank everyone who's about to buy content. I thank the nerd tribe because this is a group of people who support me. They support the message. They support the methodology. They support the content. And I really, really have to be more appreciative of those people because that's what keeps me doing what I'm doing. Because like like I said, you know, um, what I'm getting ready to do is to start posting two videos on um all my channels and the, f the video in the morning is going to be short content and the video because you know it, it's taking me some time because I'm really going to be I'm going to adhere to this schedule in November where I'm going to launch a video at 4 or 4 30 in the morning and then I'm going to launch another video at 4 30 in the afternoon five to seven days a week so that's going to be the new content release strategy and the topic in the morning is going to be more current eventy type stuff and the topic in the afternoon is going to be more economy type stuff. So this is one of the changes that I'm making. And yes, there will be a video about the Porsche because I have people like, show us the Porsche, show us the Porsche. I have a plan for that. I have a plan and it's going to just take me some time because one of the things that I'm doing is I'm just not releasing content without a plan or a methodology like this video. Um, the whole thing, like the Bible is not a historical text. It's, it's not. But people act like it is. Like, I forget when Joseph and Moses did X and Y and Z. Because I don't know these stories anymore. Because I literally stopped reading the Bible years ago. Because, and let me explain to you why I stopped reading the Bible. I saw the framework. I grew up in a place called Adamsville, Alabama. And I saw people steeped in Bible format and I didn't want to grow old and be like those people so that's one of the reasons I stopped reading the Bible because it indoctrinates you in a dogma that may not be in your best interest 
if I had stayed on the path that was laid out for me, I would be about 400 pounds, married someone that I went to high school with and have three to four kids who show up for Sunday dinner. That wasn't the life that I wanted to live. Nope, nope, nope. So this video was brought to you by the corporate game. Let's roll this beautiful bean footage right now. What's going on? My name is Glendon Cameron, and I want to introduce you to the corporate game. What is the corporate game? The corporate game is a collegiate level educational portal that will teach you how to have your best version of your life. I got a question. What would you do if you had the money that you needed to have the life that you wanted to have? And for the average American, an additional $3,000 per month makes a huge, huge difference. So this is the collegiate level corporate game, teaching you things about business, money, corporate structures, business credit, all of that, plus a lot more. Now here is the deal. You can start a business. You can do it with the right level of training and the right level of execution. And here's the thing that you have to understand. Starting this business is going to take time. I know that we are in a situation where every day you're hit over the head with information saying that you can take this course, you can hack this, and you can literally quit your job in 30 days. This isn't that. You can do it, but it's going to take time. And one of the things is, and this is something that I never hear anyone talking about, is that you have to change who you are to go ahead and to set up a situation where you can become a corporate citizen. And what's a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is a person through a job or a combination of businesses that makes $250,000 per year at this level you can get rich you can become a millionaire within 10 years following this blueprint and that's what we give you in the corporate game what it is and how to play so if you want to sign up if you want to be a millionaire within the next 10 years go ahead sign up for the corporate game the link is in the first comment